Welcome to Front Range. My name is Ernest Smith. I'm the lead pastor here, and um, man, we're just grateful for you. If this is your first time here, I uh, uh, especially want to say thank you. Our hope and prayer is that this would become a place where you can build community, discover your purpose, and grow in your faith in Jesus. Uh, I also want to welcome the Gathering Church as they're joining us this weekend as well. Man, I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm grateful for uh, your pastors, Robbie and Robert and John Mark. I've known those guys for a long time uh, and grateful for the opportunity to just be able to share with you today. And my hope and prayer is that this would be uh, uh, something that would speak into your community as well. So thanks for, for joining us. I do want to give a shout out to all the men. Uh, we call today, I know it's Father's Day, but we call this weekend Man Day. Uh, and so we give a shout out to all the men. And, and uh, my son, he loves this day. Uh, he, uh, on Mother's Day, we call it Ladies' Day. He knows that on Ladies' Day, we, uh, we give mama a present, and then we go over to a friend's house, and the guys, we have to dress up and put on these white gloves and these bow ties, and we have to serve the ladies' lunch, uh, our daughters and everybody. And it, yeah, I see the ladies like, oh, so cute. Uh, but for the guys, you know, it's just another day where we're stuck in the kitchen, you know, doing whatever. And so and my, my son, he's like, I cannot wait for Monday, Dad, what are we doing on Monday? Every day he or every year he asks that question. I say, Wyatt, what we do on Monday is we don't have to go over to our friend's house and put on gloves and bow ties and serve someone. So I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but I hope that it fills you up. And uh, I just want to say uh, a huge shout out to all the guys in my life, uh, from my friends, the guys who help uh, lead this church, to guys in my men's group, to uh, pastors all across the nation, even the pastors at the gathering. Uh, I'm just grateful for each guy in my life, uh, for the investment that you make, for the grace and the mercy that you show me, and helping me become a better follower of Jesus. Uh, today, we're going to continue, or we're going to start a new series, rather. Uh, and this series is on in my opinion, one of the most courageous, one of the most dynamic, one of the most spirit-filled and, and, and really uh, uh, integrity-filled men in the Bible, and his name is Joseph. And what we're going to see from Joseph's story is what we're to do when life goes wrong. That's what we're going to, over the next few weeks, we're going to look at what you and I, how you and I respond when life goes wrong. Now, how many of you would say over the last couple of months, life in some areas has gone a little wrong? Anybody? Yeah, if you're not raising your hand, you don't exist right now. So for all of us, life has gone a little wrong. And so I'm super excited about this series. We played in this series uh, a while ago. And man, I'm so excited about what God is going to do to each of us. So I want to uh, set it up for you. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 37. If you don't have a Bible, download the Bible app. Uh, and it's not only a great app to be able to follow along with us, uh, but it's a great app to be able to get reading plans and be able to just really study God's Word. I'm going to set up the passage for you. Uh, you got God. He created the world. Eventually, we meet this guy named Abraham. God promises to, to use Abraham to bless the world, to, to really use Abraham to create this huge nation of people. And then you go from Abraham to Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob uh, had uh, 12 sons. Uh, yeah, you, you heard that right, 12 sons. That's like an entire football team with one sub. That's a lot of boys. That's not even, we don't know how many girls he had. So he, this guy had a lot of sons. And Joseph uh, was one of those kids. He was actually the 11th son born. So he was uh, almost the baby of the group. And uh, his story is crazy. Not crazy as in like an unbelievable sense, but crazy. And we're going to just see him go through so much tragedy, so many hardships. And we're going to watch how he responds in the midst of, of life going wrong and how you and I can respond, how we can keep our faith, how we can keep our character in the midst of some of the greatest challenges that you and I will ever go through. Joseph lived during the period of the Hyksos uh, Pharaohs, which is between the 15th and 17th century B.C. Uh, he had sin older half-brothers, one full brother, a younger full brother, and then an unknown number of half and full sisters. So a very large family. At the time we meet Joseph, he's 17 years old. He's a shepherd alongside of his brothers. And this is where we pick up with a story in Genesis 37, starting with verse 2. It says this, Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So the first time that we see Joseph, the first thing that we hear is that Joseph brings this bad report about whatever his brothers have been, have been doing. We don't know what they're doing, but we do know is that snitches get, say it with me, snitches get 
Stitches. That's right. We do know that. And that's what we're going to see Joseph get a lot of stitches over the next few weeks of this series and, and how he responds in the midst of that. Let's continue. Verse 3. It says, Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an ornate robe, or many times it's called a coat of many colors. Maybe you've heard it said that way. Uh, J- uh, Joseph, uh, Jacob made Joseph this coat. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So his brothers hate him, not because of anything that, that Joseph has done, simply because his dad loves him more. He's made him this, this coat to show him that he loves him more, and that's why they hate him. This, Joseph's done nothing wrong except be born. And then all the other brothers are like, yeah, but dad loves you more than us. Now, how many of you have siblings? Anybody have a sibling? Okay, most of us have siblings. Now, there's probably been a period of time in your life where you thought, man, my parents love my sibling more than me. I know when I was growing up, I thought that about my sister all the time. And if you're sitting there thinking, Ernest, I've never had that thought. That's because you're the one they love more and we hate you. Just, just, just saying. But that, that's kind of Joseph's situation. His brothers hate him because of his dad's love and for him. And so they're about to hate him more. Let's continue. Verse 5. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. So Joseph has this dream, and it's kind of a a weird dream, and his brothers are actually the ones that interpret the dream, not Joseph, and they hate him even more for this dream. They're like, hey, you're our little brother, the little brother that dad loves more than any of us, and are you going to rule over us? Are you going to be supreme over us? I, I don't think so. Now, if I'm Joseph, I'm going, guys, it's just a dream. Like, just calm down. It's not a big deal. It's no big deal. But the problem is he has a a second one. Take a look, verse 9. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers, which probably wasn't a wise move. He says, listen, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So the second dream that he has, it causes jealousy to arise within his brothers. And uh, his dad not only rebukes him, but the Bible says his dad kept this matter in mind. And that's the Bible's way of saying his dad knew something was going on here. That maybe, just maybe, God is trying to speak to my son. Maybe, just maybe, God is trying to do something in and through my son. And I think what we see in Joseph's story is something that is true for our story. What we see in his life is true for our life. And it's this truth that God is inviting us, inviting you and I, to play a part in his bigger story. But this is what we see all throughout the context of Joseph's life is that God is inviting not only him, but he invites you and I into this this bigger story. And this is a crucial truth for you and I to believe because many people uh, believe that that God is this distant being, that he's just kind of up in in heaven somewhere, just kind of watching our lives and like, man, that really stinks. And hey, that was a really good job, but he's very distant from us. But the truth is, is that God is heavily involved in what's going on. And God has a bigger story at work than than most of us can, can even really, than I can even fathom or imagine. And God's saying, I want you to be a part. Now, for those of you who have kids, you, you understand this. Even if you don't have kids, you've probably thought at some point about kids that you would like to have, uh, or maybe you have spiritual kids, kids that you're mentoring, and, and I'm a father, and for me as a father, I have dreams and desires for my kids. I have certain hopes for them. I have certain desires for them. Well, our Heavenly Father, who's way greater than me or any other earthly father, he also has desires and dreams for you and I, and his desire is for us to be a part of the story, a bigger story that he is writing. And this story started long before we ever came into the picture. And this story is going to continue long after we're gone. I mean, we're just one small little blimp in this, this huge portrait that God is painting. We're just one little stroke 
that, that inside this portrait that God is trying to create of the world. And God is saying, but although you're just one small piece, I, I want you into this. I want you to be a part of the story. I'm moving. I'm doing something. And I want you to be a part I kind of liken it to a, a movie, like God is creating a movie. Now, I love watching movies. I don't know about you. And uh, my kids, they uh, recently picked up Chronicles of Narnia uh, again. They've watched it before. And uh, some of you may be Chronicle Nar- uh, Chronicles of Narnia fans. And uh, so as they were about to watch it, I said, hey, you know that, that Aslan, the lion, that, that he represents Jesus. And my kids, because they obviously know more than me, my daughter Waverly, she said, no, he doesn't. And I said, yes, he does. And she said, no, he doesn't. And I found myself as like an eight-year-old arguing with my sister all over again, you know, as a parent. Like, I'm more mature than that, Ernest. Come on. And, but what I realized in that moment is that my kids can't fully appreciate this movie because they don't understand some of the core pieces of a movie. They don't understand some of the core essentials that you and I have to understand to really appreciate the movie that we're watching. Well, the same is true when it comes to God's story that he's writing. There's some core essentials that we have to understand if you and I are going to play our role in the bigger story that God is writing. So what do we have to understand to play our part in God's story? The first thing we have to understand is we have to understand the bigger story. We have to understand the bigger story. It's not just uh, enough to know that God is writing a bigger story. If we want to play a part, then we have to understand what that bigger story is. God's bigger story is one of healing, of freedom, of love, of grace, of justice, of redemption. Joseph is in the Bible because God has chosen to redeem a world through people. I mean, you look at God saved a world through Noah. God saved a, 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 a people group, the Israelites, through Joseph. God saved a rebellious city through Jonah. God saved all of us through Jesus. God's bigger story is one of redemption. It's one of salvation. The world that you and I see is not the world God ever intended it to be. But because of our sin, because of my sin, my brokenness, The world that we see right now, I firmly believe, breaks the heart of God in so many ways. It was never the way God intended it to be. And so when God looks at the world you and I live in, he looks at the pain that you and I experience on a day-to-day basis. He, He looks at all the stuff that we see out there that God's heart breaks right now. And the story that he's trying to write is one of redemption, one of healing, one of salvation. It's a story that we must understand, just like my kids need to understand that there's a bigger story in in the Chronicles of Narnia for them to really appreciate the movie, we have to understand that there's a bigger story going on here, that God is trying to do something so much greater than, than maybe what we see. And so many times we make God's story about our story. Like we pray and we ask God to do things in our life for our life. But here's the reality. None of us are the star of God's story. God is the protagonist. God's the main character. God is the one writing this thing. And the beauty is he's inviting us into it. And so for us to be invited into God's story, we have to understand that this story is about redemption and that everything God wants to do in your life and through your life, everything God wants to do in my life and through my life is about redeeming. It's about redeeming my relationship with God. It's about redeeming my relationship with other people. And it's about redeeming other people's relationship with God. That's the, that's the whole core of, of what God's trying to do. That's exactly what God is trying to, to do in the, within our world. And he's saying to you and I, hey, I want you to be a part of this. But for you to be a part of this, it's not about you. It's about redemption. It's about salvation. Salvation's saving these relationships that we have with God, saving our relationship with one another. God is saying, I want you to be a part of this story, but you have to understand this story is not about you. It's a story of redemption, redeeming the world. The second thing we must understand to be able to play our part in God's story is we have to know the characters. We have to know the characters. Ernest, what, what, does, that, what does that mean? Well, to know the characters means you have to understand who came before you you have to understand who's God, who God's placed around you, and you have to understand who God wants to use you to invest in their life. 
I mean, think about the people who have come before you. There have been so many people who have come before us, people you know, who are strong in faith, people who have gone through worse situations than, than many of us ever have, and, and we can learn from their faith. I, I love the, the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. If you want to, to learn about some incredible men and women of faith in the Bible, read Hebrews chapter 11. And you, the author, he just he goes through, the author goes through this chapter and just says, hey, this person, and here's their faith, and this is what they did, and then this person, and just walks through generation after generation throughout the Bible. You think, well, Ernest, why is that even in there? Because their faith impacts our faith. Like the way that they were able to live through trying times inspires us and reminds us that we'll be okay too and that we can live through trying times as well. You and I, we have to, if we're going to know what our role is, we have to, uh, and play our part, we have to know the characters that God has, has been uh, adding into the story that he's writing. I mean, we have to understand certain people like Martin Luther and Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Florence Nightingale and so many others that have come before us and learn about their faith and how their faith impacts our faith. But it's not just the people who've come before us, but it's the people that God has placed around us. Are you intentional with the God that people with the, the, the people that God has placed around you? Are you being intentional in those relationships? Are you being intentional with the people that God is saying, I want you to invest in this person's life? Like every one of us, there are people around us, whether they're coworkers or friends or, 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 or loved ones or whatever it may be that God has placed around us saying, hey, I want you to invest in their life. And if we're not, we're not playing our part. In God's bigger story. So we have to not only know what the bigger story is, that this bigger story is redemption and it's, it's healing and it's salvation, but we have to also know the characters. And the third thing, if you and I want to play our part, is, uh, and this is probably most importantly, is we get to talk to the author. We get to talk to the author. Imagine, imagine the opportunity of sitting down with C.S. Lewis and talking to him about Chronicles of Narnia. Imagine the depth and the appreciation you would have for those books and for those movies if you were able to actually talk to the author about certain pieces of the puzzle and help me understand this a little bit more. And the reality is you and I, we get to talk to the author of life about life every day. It's a choice that we have, that we get to make. And if you want to know the desire that God has for your life, all you have to do is talk to him. I, I, I sometimes love to say to people that God loves you and I have a wonderful plan for your life. But the reality is God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life. Are you listening? You know, as a pastor in, in the moments that we're in right now, the time that we're in right now, I think the most heartbreaking thing that I'm seeing is that people are listening to so many other voices than the voice of God. It's probably the most heartbreaking thing that I'm watching is watching people listen to the voice of Fox or CNN or Facebook or their friends or their spouse or whoever it may be. And they're, they're listening to the voices of so many others. Well, so-and-so says this. Well, I read this and, and I saw this and I watched this. And God's going, I'm trying to speak to you. Like my voice is the only one that eternally matters. If you want to know your purpose, I've got it. If you want to know your part, I know it. I've already sketched it out for you. All you have to do is listen. May we listen to the voice of God, not the voice of others. Even good people, if they're speaking God's truth, then they're speaking for God. And that's listening to the voice of God. So you, God can speak through others. God can speak through in, in other ways, but it's got to match up to this right here. And if it doesn't, don't listen to it. It will drive your life in a different direction than the direction God wants. And so what do you need to do this week? If you want to know how to play a bigger part of God's story, maybe for some of us, we need to start by understanding what the bigger story is. If that's you, I would encourage you, you can do two things. Number one, um, we have a reading plan on frontrange.info. And even those of you at the gathering, man, we'd love to join, uh, for you to join us in this. If you go to frontrange.info, uh, there's a reading plan tab. And if you go there, it's a six-day reading plan on the life of Joseph. It's only six days, okay? So for some of us, we'll get it done in six days. For others of us, we'll get it done in six weeks. And that's okay. But at least engage. 
at least read scripture to understand God's bigger story. Another thing you can do, I, I would encourage you to do this, is uh, there's a show called The Chosen. Some of you have seen it. Some of you are like, I've never heard of that before. Uh, the Chosen is kind of like a crowdsourcing show. Uh, and uh, you can get it on their app called The Chosen, or you can watch it on YouTube. Those are the only two places. And uh, I think there's, in the first season, there's like eight episodes. They're about 30 minutes long. And it's about the life of Jesus. Now, they obviously take some artistic liberties within the show, but it is probably the most biblically correct show on Christ I've ever seen. And it just has, it's been kind of eye-opening for me as I read through the Gospels, and then I watch the show, and I'm like, Wow, like it puts these people that I read about into like real life. And so you can watch that and that'll also help you get you a, a bigger picture of the story that God is writing. Maybe for some of us, um, we need to know the characters. And if that's you, I, you can also watch the show Chosen because it talks, it, it gives a good picture of, uh, uh, of all the disciples that Jesus calls to himself and the healings and miracles and all of that. So you can watch that and know some of the characters. I would also encourage you to read Hebrews chapter 11. Even if you got to sit in it. I, I've been reading it for like three weeks right now, honestly. Like pretty much every day I'm reading Hebrews 11, just going back through and studying this person and this person and just being reminded of the strong faith that some of these men and women had even in the face of great adversity. So you can read Hebrews chapter 11. Maybe for some of you, you're, and this, this is the area that I need to grow in the most, is that opportunity to get to talk to the author. And if that's you, if you'd say, man, Ernest, my prayer life could, could use a boost. Like, I, I could really grow in this area. Here's what I would encourage you to do this week. Write down five things. And if you already got five, then add a couple to them or whatever. But at least five things that you're going to be praying for every day this week. Every day. And some of you, you already do that, and that's awesome. Maybe this is an area you need to grow in. Maybe for some of you, like, I already have those five things, but I need to be more intentional and in praying through some of those things. And so just five things. Write down five things that you need to be praying for every single day and then make time to talk to the author. I, that could be difficult, right? I mean, like most of us are still working from home and maybe we've got kids running around or we're busy or work starting back up or whatever it may be. And so, man, it's like, man, I don't know how I find quiet time, Ernest. Even if you've got to lock yourself in the bathroom, find it somewhere and just spend some time with the Lord speaking to the author of your life. See, God created you for a purpose. And if God wanted you to exist at any other time period, you would have existed then, but you exist now for such a time as this. And I look at this time and I think, and we're, we're in some crazy times right now. It'll be real easy for me to say, man, God, kind of remove me from this. Like, just kind of isolate me and, and kind of get me out of here. Like, it's just too hard right now. But for me, I go, God, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this time. As hard as it is, as challenging as it is, you're doing something in the midst, and I want to be a part. And the beauty is God is inviting us in. He's saying, I'm writing a bigger story. Will you be a part?